पलपन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जो गल चरण सोल चिन्ह जे नजर सामी पे रहो हमारी नजर समी पे रहो हमारी घनश्याम महाराज नीजे हरि कृष्ण महाराज नीजे स्वामी नारायण भगवान नीजे सुप्रीम ऑल माइडी our Bhagwan Swami Narayan, the path maker to our liberation, our most dear Puja Guruji, Jai Santo, Puja Bhagatji, and all of you devotees, Jai Swami Narayan. When Bhagwan comes on this earth, there is always a purpose and a reason why he comes. If we look at an example from anywhere, if the president goes outside of the country to another country, he has some kind of purpose to fulfill, some kind of task he has to get done. With Bhagwan, his case is completely different. His case for coming on earth was completely out of anyone's comprehension. It is only when he himself explained to Sadhguru Gopan Swami in the village of Karyani that everyone now and then found out why he came on this earth. How far Akshar Dham is, if we look at it from a physical standpoint, it can't be measured. But if we look at it from the point of the soul, it's not even an atom's distance away. But when Bhagwan does come from his Akshar Dham to this earth, he has some purposes that he has to fulfill. And today we want to uncover this prasang, the story of how and when Maharaj reveals his intention for coming on this earth in the village of Karyani to Sadguru Goparan Swami. So today I would like to read a prasang to all of you. And as we read, you'll, we'll find out what happens and we'll learn more in depth. Sri Hari declared that he would celebrate the festivals of Diwali and the New Year's Day in Karyani. A few days later, a devotee arrived from Vadodara and gave news of Goparan Swami's arrival. Sri Hari was in his room, Akshaurdi, detecting a letter to Sadhguru Shukanan Swami. Maharaj asked the devotee where he had come from. I have come from Varodra. At your behest, Goparan Swami was arriving, will be arriving here soon. I hurry to let you know that he is coming in advance. Sri Hari was pleased and blessed and blessed the devotee. Maharaj wished to receive Goparan Swami, so he proceeded to welcome him. So at that time, a devotee came, a messenger, and passed the news that Goparan Swami is coming from Vadodara to the village of Karyani. And one of Bhagwan's swabhav was that he, whenever any santos come, would accept them with great welcoming, would hug them. Today, in 
our Santo's Katha in the afternoon Puja Guruji was reading Haricharitramnut Sagar. We were listening to the Katha via video. And there he explained how Bhagwan had a Swabhal, a nature, to welcome his Santos at any time. And in the same fashion, we can see this prasang taking place live, how Maharaj welcomes Gopan Swami. On seeing Maharaj, Gopan Swami started prostrating. Maharaj held his hands and raised, raised, them, raised him. Do not prostrate anymore. You have traveled far and must be tired. Triyari embraced Swami and asked him, Are you happy? Yes, by your grace I am well. Triyari looked lovingly at Gopan Swami without blinking his eyes. All witnessed the love and respect Maharaj had for him. The arrival of Gopan Swami was something more in the eyes of all the devotees. Nishkunan Swami was constructing an open air bathing, air bathing area for Maharaj. He added, Maharaj, Gopan Swami comes from a city, therefore he must be happy. <laughs> Nishkunan Swami was the idol of non-attachment. He didn't like living in any kind of cities or any kind of areas with a lot of people or any kind of technology or nothing at all. He liked the forest in a simple lifestyle. So he, he joked to Maharaj that, of course, Maharaj, Gopan Swami is happy. He is coming from a city. In city, you get all the luxuries you want, all the food that you need, everything and anything you want. But Gopan Swami was not that kind of a sant. But Nishkaranan Swami was just making a joke by saying this to Maharaj. Sri Hari asserted, the city life does not affect him. He is spiritually high, so he can create an ambience of renunciation and austerity like that of a forest. Nishkaran Swami simply stood still, mewling over Maharaj's words. He recalled him, so he, he, he recalled how he had rejected a delicious meal in Vadodara in Gopan Swami's presence and left as quickly as possible. He had then felt as how a sadhu could restrain his senses and mind in the, for, in the face of beautiful, nice meals offered by devotees. Today, however, Sri Hari's praise for Gopan Swami made him realize that Swami was immune to the sense pleasures of the city, like that he had the power of, of non-bondage, meaning vairagya, or non-attachment. Sri took Gopan Swami to his room. He sat him on his bed while Gopan Swami settled on a, bl on a blanket on the floor. Maharaj inquired about the devotees of Vododra and how they were faring, meaning how they were doing. After some time, Mulji Brahmachari, Mulji Brahmachari brought lunch for Maharaj. Sri Hari told Gopan Swami to wash and refresh himself. After his meal, Maharaj instructed his attendant to send the prasad to Gopan Swami. So, this is a small incident. It's going on. Bhagwan invited Gopan Swami to his room and told him to sit on the same bed as him, but Swami sat on the floor. Then, Muljibaram Chari Bhagwan's, you can say, servant came and gave him his lunch. So, Bhagwan took lunch and then passed the other prasad to Gopan Swami. In the evening, Maharaj told Sukhan Swami to call Gopan Swami. Sri Hari wished to speak to him alone in Akshawardi. He told Sukhmuni to leave. On learning that Maharaj had called Gopan Swami, Nishwaran Swami left his work and entered Akshawardi to hear him. Sri Hari told him, Swami, you must oversee the work or else it would not be done properly. Nishwaran Swami went out. And he appointed some saints to supervise the work and returned to hear Maharaj. Again, Maharaj insisted, Swami, without your supervision, the work will not be done according to your expectation. Therefore, go and oversee the work yourself. You know, sometimes when two people are talking and then someone else just comes in and you're trying to have a very secretive conversation that... You don't want anyone to hear. But 
when a third party comes in and that person is not trying to overhear but just comes in, you feel that two things need to happen. Number one, we need to stop talking. Or number two, the third party member must leave so we can continue talking. So in this case, Maharaj pretty much doesn't want anyone but Gopal Swami in the room because he wants to share something secretive. He wants to share something that he has never revealed to anyone on this earth or he has never spoken th those kinds of words to anyone on this earth. But Nishkaran Swami just wants to come in and hear Maharaj's talk. Now we can see from that point that look at how much haste, look at how much affection, look at how much you can say uh, attraction Nishkuran Swami has for Maharaj and to listen to his words. But Maharaj does not insist on him staying. Let's see what happens next. When Nishkuran Swami left, Maharaj bolted the door, meaning he locked the door. But Swami got an inkling that Sri Ji Maharaj was going to reveal something of great significance to Gopar and Swami. Meaning, Nishkaran Swami was, he had a quick, quick pickup, meaning he was smart, he was witty. So he obviously figured that if Maharaj locked the door, there must be something, you can say, secretive, something significant, something very important that he is about to reveal to Gopar and Swami. So we can say that Nishkaran Swami is, in modern terms, an instigator. Yeah, he likes to hear in on things. Let's see what happens. So he sat outside listening through a crack in the door. Maharaj asked Gopar and Swami, I have come from Akshradham with my abode and muktos like yourself. Do you know my purpose on earth? Maharaj asked, I have come from Akshradham with my muktos like yourself. Do you know my purpose? Do you know why I am here? What is the reason? Swami said, no. Then listen. I have come to accomplish six things. After revealing them to you, may you endeavor further in realizing and spreading them in satsang. Meaning, what Maharaj wants to do is he wants to tell Gopan Swami and he wants Gopan Swami to meaning spread these six, you can say, reasons for him coming on this earth to the whole satsang so everyone knows. Gopan Swami became attentive and eager to hear what Maharaj had to say. Now, you know, when someone really close to you, they want to give you some really secret information, you become very attentive, meaning all your senses become very sharp and focused, and you're all, you have no thoughts in your mind but the thought that, what is he going to tell me? What is he going to tell me? What is he going to tell me? I can't wait. I can't. Impatient grows. In the same way, Swami became very, very eager to listen to what Maharaj had to say. Let's see what Maharaj says and reveals. Sri Hari revealed, meaning it doesn't say here said, because Maharaj has said many things, but what do you have to reveal? Something that no one knows, right? It's kind of like a secret. In the same way, in that time, in that room, in that very moment, only Maharaj and Nishkaran Swami were there and outside listening into was Nishkur or sorry, Maharaj and Gopan Swami and outside was Nishkaran Swami listening in. No one else was even in the vicinity. And this is what Bhagwan reveals. Sri Hari revealed, the first reason that I have come on this earth is to spread my supreme upasana and knowledge, meaning who I am. Bhagwan never directly says anything, but in the Vachnamrut, there is numerous, numerous statements that we can just tell that the speaker himself, meaning Sriji Maharaj, is talking about himself, but obviously he uses a third person, so then it doesn't seem. And 
at least those who read in the future don't think that oh look at look at Bhagwan is talking about himself what kind of Bhagwan is this no one else you know develops any kind of negative thoughts or ne- any kind of uh, negative feelings but those who will pick up will automatically pick up that Bhagwan is just talking about himself it's just for me to realize so the first reason was because of his upasana and his knowledge meaning Bhagwan is his upasana meaning to understand Bhagwan to be sarvopari supreme beyond all other deities avatars call them anything and everything there is no one and Puja Guruji himself told us in Sa- in our Santos Katha many years back that just remember that Bhagwan is supreme and beyond everyone and all avatars and all deities and everyone. But don't ever even even think that there is even someone even next to Bhagwan. There is no seat but one seat, and that is the seat of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. And then everyone else falls underneath. So Bhagwan wanted everyone to realize this, this kind of knowledge, the essence of the Swaminarayan Sampradaya, you can say. Second, to liberate the past avatars and their devotees through the knowledge of my divine form and bless them with Akshradam. Meaning, those who were in, those who believed in other, other, other avatars, like Krishna, Ram, Vishnu, etc., and so on and so forth, have them realize that the Supreme Lord Himself has come on this earth. And if you take advantage by understanding him to be supreme and performing his devotion, then you too will attain Akshradham. At that time, there was many, many other divisions, you can say. Many, many other religions. But Bhagwan had and performed so many charitras, so many divine incidences that no other past avatars had ever performed. And his santos recorded these divine incidences in various books, like you can say Satsangi Jivan, Bhakta Chintamani. Even by reading the Vachnamrut, one can tell even Nishkura and Kavya, Purushottam Prakash, all these different books entitled how Bhagwan and who he was. But by these charitras, Hari Charitramrut Sagar, all these charitras, no other avatars in the past have ever performed. And not to say only that, but Bhagwan Swaminarayan Santo, like Sadguru Muktanan Swami, Sadguru Gopan Swami, Sadguru Gunatitanan Swami, etc., so on and so forth, they performed greater miracles than avatars in the past, like Ram Krishna. Such kinds of incidences, such kind of prasangs are in scriptures proving. That if, if God's disciples are, you can say more, you can say powerful than avatars, then imagine how God himself is. Something that is not in our comprehension. But we can definitely see that Bhagwan lives through his son. There is a kirtan that it goes like this and I'll explain the meaning. It's very, very, uh, it, it gives the essence of everything. Vedanti arupi keche, nyaya yanu mani leche, tevalo santo mare heche re, saluni chabi, sahajananda sukhakari re. Saluni chavi Meaning Vedanti Arupi Kesha. Meaning Vedanti Vedant is Vedanti is like another their scriptures. They're saying that they're comprehending that Bhagwan doesn't have a form. That's what they're stating. In Nyai is another scripture that is just guessing, Anuman, meaning they're just guessing that Bhagwan is like this, or Bhagwan is like this, or this is how many qualities it has. But in this kirtan, Nishkuran Swami is saying, in this kirtan, the composer, that you don't have to look in these scriptures to find Bhagwan and know how he is. 
He lives in his true ekantik sadpurush. He lives in a, him and he does his works. And through associating with his ekantik sadpurush, one can also attain him. We're very fortunate that now the one that who have, we've been waiting for we haven't read any scriptures we haven't done any kind of devotion even close to those past santos or any kind of penance or any kind of austerities or anything but it is our you can say fortune it is our you can say not luck but our you can say destiny that we are going to have the darshan of puja guruji in less than 7 days 6 days next saturday in the morning and the one where who has constant connection with bhagwan he is the one that is going to arrive then imagine how we should feel imagine then how we should understand him, take the opportunity to stay with him, to serve him, to have his darshan. Because to have exactly his, his darshan is to have Bhagwan's darshan, according to the Vachnamrakarda, 1st chapter 37. Such kind of a bhakta. Bhagwan uses that kind of language. Such kind of a bhakta. Meaning the term bhakta is not for household devotees. Bhakta is a follower. Obviously, a saint is also a follower. In the same way, a householder is a follower. But such kind of a bhakta. And in that, what Bhagwan describes that by having his darshan, you're having the darshan of Bhagwan himself, and through him, liberation can be granted. So, remembering that, Puja Guruji's arrival is on Saturday, June 3rd, 8 a.m., he will be arriving here at airport in Newark, but at the evening time at Loyadam Mandir, New Jersey. Uh, he will be having his welcome sabah here. For those who are out of state, please watch live sabah, live katha, and you will get his blessings and his darshan as well. Moving on. Third, to establish ekantik dharma on earth. Ekantik dharma meaning to spread the knowledge of dharma, bhakti, gnana, and vairagya. These four components are necessary to go to Akshardham, not only that, but to become an ekantik, a singular bhakta. Bhagwan's end goal for each and every devotee is to become a singular-minded devotee. Nothing else but Bhagwan and his ekantik satpurush. There is nothing else for him. There, this world is just not for him. He's living in him. He's living in this world, yet he's not in this world. Everything and everything that he is experiencing, feeling, doing, talking, walking, it's on this earth in a physical standpoint. But his vrutti, meaning his, his attention, his, his vision is on Bhagwan and his ekantik satpurush. Slowly and surely, by the grace of an ekantik satpurush, we can become ekantik. That's the only way that can happen. Fourth, to give the bliss of my form to, to Bhakti Devi and Dharma Dev. The mother and father of Bhagwan Swami Narayan on this earth were Dharma Dev and Bhakti Mata. Meaning, you're probably wondering, Bhagwan had parents too? Well, when Bhagwan even takes birth on this earth. He even has to stay according to the standards of the world. He can't break anything. He doesn't break. He can break any, you can say, niyams or laws. But he wants the cycle to remain as is. And he just wants to enter the world as a normal human being. But Dharma Dev and Bhakti Mahata, they experience much, much pain before the born of Bhagwan, And due to that, due to their hardship, Bhagwan wants to give his happiness in the form of Gansham for 11 years to Dharmadeva and Bhakti Mata 
in the village of Chapaya in Ayodhya. That's why he came on this earth and gave bliss to them for 11 years. Fifth, to bless aspirants engaged in pilgrimage, austerities, charity, and other things with my association and bless them with Akshardham. Meaning as, the, as when Bhagwan arrived, after he left his home at the age of 11, he took the form of Nilkan Verni. Meaning at, as a teenager, and he traveled around India, and he met so many kinds of kings and many, many people, many, many different types of saints, and, but he wanted to liberate all of them. So by traveling around and those who became, you can say, attracted towards him or those who even engaged with him for some time, he blessed them and released them and gave them Akshardham. And the, and the sixth and final reason is to liberate innumerable souls by taking them to Akshardham through the association of my idol devotee. Meaning, finally, our number is up. The reason why he came was to give us bliss and to take us to Akshardham through his idol. Meaning, in Vartal as of right now, Bhagwan himself installed Hare Krishna Maharaj. And through that idol, Bhagwan himself lives just like how he lives in Akshardham, just like how he lives in each and every soul. In the same exact manner, he lives in the form of Hare Krishna Maharaj. And there he gives bliss to many, many, many thousands and millions and millions of, of people. Devotees that have their darshan and sends them to Akshardham. That's why Bhagwan has given or has come on this earth. I have come from Akshardham on earth for these six reasons. We have to fulfill them all. Meaning Bhagwan is saying now, I want to get these tasks started. You know, I want to get these this matter started. These are the six reasons you have to help me out, Swami. Gopan Swami prayed humbly, Maharaj, they will be realized through your divine powers. Then a loud rap on the door interrupted their dialogue. When the door was opened, Nishkoran Swami entered and declared, Maharaj, from your revelation, today I have discovered the missing link. Sri Hari was puzzled and asked, What is it? Your glory as Purshottam, the Supreme Bhagwan." Nishkoran Swami replied with joy. He continued, When you first arrived in Loj, I went to Kach for Rama and Swami's darshan. But the Guru approached, re-approached me for coming and, and commanded me to go to Lodge for your darshan. I asked him, How great is Verni? Meaning Nilkan Verni at that time. Raman Swami explained, Lalji, you're, you'll not believe me now, but the Supreme Purushottam Narayan, the incarnation of all incarnations, has arrived in the form of Verni. I and countless like me are insignificant before him. In the future, you will realize and sing his glory profusely, regardless of any constraint. Sri Hari and Gopan Swami smiled at Nishkaran Swami's narration. Maharaj said, It is difficult to understand this and imbibe it in one's heart. Nishkaran Swami replied with joy, Maharaj, Guru Raman Swami revealed your supreme glory, and today you have endorsed it. Meaning you have stamped it, you have finalized it, that Raman Swami told me you're supreme and today you told Gopan Swami and I overheard it. So for a fact, I know that you are the supreme Lord. And from this incident, after Nishkoran Swami leaves, he writes the book that is in Nishkoran Kavya called Purushottam Prakash. And he reveals Bhagwan's supremacy and how he is and who he is and how great he is. So, this is the story behind how Bhagwan himself came on this earth and revealed his six reasons. And not only that, but proved that he is a Supreme Lord. And from this matter, all and everyone in Satsang knows that Bhagwan arrived for the benefit of all. Saying this, we should remember that Bhagwan has arrived for us. He has installed his idol for us. Now it is our job to go back up to him. It is our job 
to become free from this world, detached from this world, engage with the Akandik Satpurush and go back up to Him. It's all in our hands what we do. So make the right decision and I pray that each and every one takes the opportunity that when Puja Guruji comes on June 3rd to have his darshan via in person at Loyadam Mandir NJ or via live katha at our website theswaminarayan.org. Saying this, my humble Jay Swaminarayan. वर्णिवेशरमणीयदर्शनम मंदहासरुचिरादनाम्बुज पूजितम सुरनरो तमेर मुदा धर्मनंदनम हम विचिन्तय धर्मनंदनम हम विचिन्तय श्रीगणश्याम महाराजनी जय Many times we have listened. Stuti from so, uh, from the Bhakta Chintamani second chapter. Santa Krupai Sukha Upaje Santa Krupati Sare Kama Santa Krupati Pami E Purana Purushottam Dhamma This Kadi explain the glory of the sun. That even by the grace of Sant, one can attain the divine abode of Aksardam. Let me see one of the incident. By the grace of Sant, one can easily attain the divine abode of Aksardam. In the divine presence of our Piyuda Gansyam Maharaj, divinely present, our Puja Guruji and all of your devotees, first of all, Jai Swami Narayan. There was uh, there were li- different different titles given to our non santo by Bhagwan Swaminarayan as well as the devotees and some santos at that time as well as after that. Just as like Sadguru Sri Muktanan Swami, we know Muktanan Swami is known as the mother of uh, mother of satsang, meaning satsang ni ma. In the same way, Sadguru Gopalan Swami, he is described as Aishwarya Murti, meaning one who has divine powers. Niskudan Swami, he is described as the personified form of detachment. Praman Swami, he is a true form of affection towards Bhagwan. In this way, many santos receive such kind of different different titles, and one of such sant that was Atmanand Swami, he received a title of Vachanni Murti, meaning 
one who has <coughs> acquired qualities that never breach a single commands of bhagwan swami narayan meaning he ever ready he remain ever ready to follow each and every commands given by bhagwan swami narayan now today we are going to listen about atmanand swami atmanand swami formerly known as bhai atmanand swami once in the sabha in the assembly of santo and devotees bhagwan swami narayan he was sitting and he asked a question who want to become brother of mine meaning who want to be remain or stay with me as my brother if bhagwan asked us then we definitely said yes maharaj i want to become your brother who do not want to become a brother of bhagwan everybody want in the same way in that assembly most of the santos and devotees just they try to raise their hands and they try to indicate that i want to become your brother at the same time maharaj said but for that i have one condition i want to apply one condition for that eligibility and maharaj said only one who had not break a single commands of a uh, single commands given by me only that person can be able to become my brother this incident happened after passing away of ramdas ji swami because ramdas ji swami was a first disciple of ramanand swami and that is why maharaj believed him and be have with him as he is his elder brother and that is why in satsang even maharaj also call him as not ramdas ji swami but as bhai ram this bhai ramdas ji swami but as he passed away he returned to aksardham and that's why maharaj in the assembly maharaj decide, uh, desire to make another brother and this atmanand swami he was also a disciple of ramanand swami he was able to become a brother of maharaj but as maharaj posed a condition in the assembly that i have one condition and that is one only one who had not breached single commands of mine that can be able to become a brother of mine and in the sabha just as all of the santos and devotees that uh, just desire to raise their hand to become a brother of maharaj and after listening this condition from maharaj they all desire not to raise their hand but atmanand swami he raised his hand and he said maharaj i want to become your brother because i have never breach on uh, i have never breach a single command of you then maharaj would become very pleased upon him and maharaj say yes you are true you are only eligible to become my brother and after that maharaj offered him a garland and after that maharaj declared and announced in the assembly that now from today this atman and swami he become my brother and from today you have to call him as bhai atman and swami as well as you have to be him be have with him as well as you have to give respect in the same way just as you were giving or you gave the same respect to bhai ram das ji swami so in this way atman and swami become a brother of maharaj meaning a uh, not the brother in the relation but in such a way that just as brother can say his brother anything in this way bhatnan and swami also able to say anything to maharaj so this is what how atman and swami become bhatman and swami now after this incident 
uh, many years, many years passed. And finally, even after departing of Maharaj, Bhayat Manu Swami was there on, uh, in, on this earth. Meaning he did not return to Aksardham. And he even completed his 116 years. So after this old age, Swami became uh, very sick once upon a time. And so Swami decided not to travel in the satsang but stay at one place. And he selected to, uh, selected to stay at one place in the village of Bhagat. There Swami stayed for many days and as he was sick, he gradually, his sickness and illness gradually increased. Now, as one becomes sick or one become, uh, one has particular kind of uh, long time disease, then one is not able to even walk, not, e not even become able to uh, perform his activity, daily activities. Because of illness or because of sickness, one has definitely and uh, gener uh, naturally one has a weakness in his body. In the same way, Bhayatman Swami, he had also weakness in his body. Now, as the illness increased day by day, so his body became very weak, weak, weak. And finally, the day come that uh, Bhayat Manam Swami even cannot get up from his body, uh, from, from his bed. And he lay down the whole day and night on his bed. When the attendant sadhu or attendant devotee he came there, then Swami, with the help of the others, Swami even got up from his bed and uh, he performed his natural bodily activities. Even whenever Bhayatman Swami desired to go for answering call of nature or for other activities, then he required one's help. Now, as Swami is staying in the village of Vagar, there some santo and devotees were there. They, no doubt, they all these devotees and santo, they look after Bhayatman and Swami. But many times, santo and devotees they forget to do seva of Swami, and that is why, as because of weakness, Swami could not be able to walk or could not be able to even get up from his bed. So many times, Swami had to pass urine or stool in the bed, and as the after many times, after an hour or more, when the attendant come to see Swami, then at that time he changed clothes of Swami and cleans his bed seats and everything. So in this way, Swami had to suffer. This is not Swami's weakness. This is not because of Swami's illness. He is able to do everything, but still, as according to rules that even Bhagwan and his Mukta, whenever they came on this earth at the time, they always behave as a human being. So they perform all the same kinds of actions, just as the other ordinary human beings perform. And that is why Atman and Swami, Bhayatman and Swami, he was able to do everything and still as he wanted to follow Maharaj's commands not to show their divine power and that is why he even suffered from this kind of illness. Once upon a time, even in, in this time of his illness, Sivlal said from Bhutan, he came there for Swami's darshan. As he did darshan of Swami and he understood the situation, he observed, he examined the service performed by the attendant sant or the devotees.
for Swami, then he did not become satisfied with this seva. And he decided to stay there in Vagar for only for performing seva of Swami. And Sivlal in this way took a charge of seva of personal seva for Payatman and Swami. He cleans Swami's bed, he washed even his Swami's clothes, bed seats, everything. He keep a clean his room and even Swami when he would desire to eat anything, fruits or whatever, then he made a he make a facilities so that Swami can eat whatever he desire. In this way, Sivlal said, started to perform performing seva of Bhayatman and Swami. And while doing seva, Sivlal had to stay there for many, many days. And finally, Bhayatman and Swami decided to go back to Akshardham, his real home. Now, before one day of his departure, Swami called Sivlal near to him. And Swami said, Sivlal, now I become very pleased by your service for me. And that is why I want to give you something. So please ask, whatever you desire. I want to go to Akshardham tomorrow. And that is why today is my last day. I want to give you something. Please ask whatever you desire. Then Sivlal did not give a reply and he remained quiet for some time. Then Swami said, Sivlal, do not think, do not understand that I am I'm even not able to get up from this bed or I am even not able to perform my bodily activities. So I am not able. But I'm, I have such a divine power because of Maharaj's grace that I can even remove all kinds of problems and diseases of all of the peoples in this world. Then what's about my disease? But I only want to follow Maharaj's command and that is why I am suffering from this disease. So do not think for my weakness. I am not such kind of uh, I'm not like an ordinary person. I can remove this within a fraction of a second. So please ask something. Then Sivlal said, Swami, I do not want anything of this world. If you become pleased upon me, then please, I have one request. Please give me a promise to take me after 13 days, after 13 days passed after your departure to Akshardham, please come to me with Maharaj to take me into Akshardham. Give me this promise that you will definitely come after 13th day of your passing. Then Swami remained quiet for some time. And he said, after that he said, Okay, Sivlal, be ready. You have only 14 days. Tomorrow I will go to Akshardham. And after 13th day, I will come back with Maharaj to take you into Akshardham. Sivlal says, Swami, I have no any kind of worldly desire. But I only perform the post death ceremonies of you. I want to feed all the santos and devotees. Only that desire remain in my heart. And that is why I say it only after 13th day. Then, according to Swami's words, the next day Swami decided time. Swami passed away and he returned to his uh, Bhagwan's divine about Aksardham. And as after 13th all the post uh, date ceremonies and rituals completed by Sivlal after passing away of Bhayatman and Swami. And as 
they listen the kadi in the first संत कृपाय सुख उपजे संत कृपा थी सरे काम संत कृपा थी पामी ए पूरण पुरुषोत्तम धाम इन दिस वे ओनली बिकॉज ऑफ संत ग्रेस ओनली बिकॉज ऑफ बायतमान एंड स्वामीज ग्रेस शिवलाल ऑल्सो अटेन द डिवाइन अंबार ऑफ अक्षर धाम एंड फाइनली बायतमान एंड स्वामी खेम in divine form with maharaj to take shivlal said into his divine body akshirda and just as swami returned to akshirda after saying to all the devotees and shivlal prior of one day in the same way shivlal said also declare in the assembly of Uh, after uh, after the post the ceremony of swami he declared in the assembly that now i also will go to aksardham the next day and in this way while saying jai swami narayan to all the devotees and santo shivlal said also went to aksardham with maharaj and bhayatman and swami this is what our santo's glory that whatever written in the scriptures that's the true if we have trust in the words of the scriptures we will also enjoy the same kind of pleasure just as shivlal said enjoy the divine bliss of aksardham only by the grace of sant bhayatman and swami so if we receive rajipo or pleasure from Our Kantik Satpurus Pujya Guru Ji. Then we will definitely, without any, uh, without performing any more endeavor, with the, without performing any more or harsh austerities or tap or wrath or whatever, we also by pleasing our Satpurus, pleasing to Pujya Guru Ji, we will definitely attain the divine abode of Aksardham. श्री गणश्याम महाराज जय श्रीपति श्रीधर सर्वेश्वर भक्तिधरमात्मज वासुदेव हरे माधव केशव कामद कारण स्वामीनारायण नीलकंठम भजे श्री घनश्याम महाराज जय